European stock markets are downbeat this Monday as concern rises over President Trump's ability to get his promised US tax cuts and infrastructure spending through. Meanwhile, the pound hits an eight-week high. This is Daily FX. You're with me, Katie Pilbeam. Let's get to the numbers. And it's red across the bosses, as you can see. It's basic resources that are the biggest losers here in London. A lot of that's to do with the fact that copper has hit a two-week low. This is because of suggestions that, again, we're talking about Trump, he might be forced to abandon his plans to increase infrastructure spending. And of course, there'll be less demand. But precious metals are faring much better. So as we just saw, the markets, they're still reacting to the collapse. On Friday, the US president's bid to uh, repeal Obamacare health reforms. That's the collapse we're talking about right here. Now, Donald Trump failed to push his new reformed health care bill through in a Congress dominated by his own Republican Party. And the US healthcare reform stalemate, if you like, it's given Sterling a hoist. Despite the fact that here we're all looking at Article 50, it's going to be triggered this week, but really proving that Trump, the so called Trump trade slump that it's now being referred to, is really the overall driver of the market. Sterling traded at 12577 at one point on Monday morning, its highest level against the dollar since the beginning of February. Well, let's talk about the dollar then. I get the dollar basket up and just see how that's performing because it's falling against the euro, the Swiss franc, the Japanese yen and the Canadian dollar. That was all in early trade. Well, one of the effects um, of all of this, of the euro's rise against the dollar, which we're going to have a look at just now, and we'll be able to see some of those patterns, has been a break above the neckline of an inverse head and shoulders pattern on the daily chart. It suggests further strength in the pair in the days ahead. So that's certainly something uh, we're watching. Let's just get out the daily right here. <clears throat> OK, let's move on because I want to talk about German business morale because it's actually hit a 68 month high. Well, this is according to the latest survey from the IFO think tank, which means business confidence within manufacturing, retailing and construction firms has not been this high since July 2011. The number jumped up to 112.3 this month from 111.1 in February. Well, one of the stories doing the rounds here in London is BT because it's been hit with a £42 million fine from telecoms regulator Ofcom for delays in installing high-speed lines. The telecom giant will also have to pay £300 million to corporate customers. Let's just have a quick look at the chart. The investigation found BT had broken rules put in place to counter its significant market power by cutting compensation payments to telecom providers. Moving on, the Bank of England released details of its new stress test today. Well, the weakness of the pound will now feature in further tests and evaluate how the banks would handle a further drop in the sterling of 32%. The UK's largest banks will also face a consumer credit review as well. Now, this new test will occur every other year. It will assess banks' resilience to a wider range of risks, such as persistently low interest rates, which is what they're enduring now, and high costs costs too. Uh, moving on, it was a good weekend for the German Chancellor because her Conservative Party won a regional election in the western state of Saarland. This means that Angela Merkel's Christian Democrats party bolstered their position as the state's largest party. All right, let's look ahead to Tuesday and see what is happening because Italy is due to report its industrial sales. Uh, that's for January. Also, we're going to be focusing on US data because we've got wholesale inventories for February. They're set to come in at 0.3%. On the corporate front, we've got uh, Carnival, we've got Wolseley, we've got AA, AG Bar, Thomas Cook, we've got United Utilities, as well as Ladbrokes Coral as well. It's uh, a bookies here. And actually, it's had... a uh, much better year than the prior year and that's because a lot of people lost money so if people betting lose money they make money that's sadly how it works um, that's all for me so i'll see you same time tomorrow let's have another quick check-in on the markets and just see but it's pretty much a sea of red here in europe this monday afternoon